Hello everyone and welcome back to Thank F for Concealer, where today Bungie has dropped the Brave Arsenal on us that's coming with Into the Light on April 9th. We have all of the perk rolls for all 12 weapons that are coming that you're going to be able to grind for for the next couple of months. But first, I want to start way down here. And I just want to get this out of the way right now because I know people are going to be upset. So let's just talk about it. Half of these will be available starting April 9th, including the Recluse, Hung Jury, Succession, Edge Transit, Elsie's Rifle, and Falling Guillotine. The remainder will unlock one at a time each week through the week of May 21st. And they will continue to drop from Onslaught after the final shape. So Onslaught is sticking around after final shape. The limited edition variants which don't have any gameplay differences, by the way, it's just cosmetic, won't be available after June 3rd, so go get them while you can. So if you were wondering how they were going to sustain us for the next couple of months when Into the Light drops, well, there you go. And I can understand being a little disappointed at this, you know, because maybe your favorite weapon is, you know, Hammerhead is probably going to be a lot of people's favorites, uh, or even a Blast Furnace. And it's not dropping the first week. So if you're not excited about these weapons, it's kind of like, all right, slow start. Or, or like, you know, imagine your favorite weapon doesn't come out until, until May 21st. That kind of that kind of sucks. So I just want to put that out there. Um, I, I don't think it's like, I understand the mentality behind it. Like, you don't want to just completely overload people immediately with, with too many choices. Because again, like, y'all watching, like, y I know you have it under control, right? You are much more heavily engaged than the average Destiny person. But it's still very overwhelming to the per to the person who's, like, not really that engaged with the game. But, yeah, it's, it's just unfortunate if, you know, like, your favorite weapon comes out much later and you don't have time to go grind for it or, like, whatever. So, just wanted to put that out there. I know. I know. What can you do? What can you do? All right. So let's talk about some God rolls here. So what I plan on doing is just kind of going over every weapon, all of its perk rolls. What am I going to be looking for personally? But also sometime down the road, if there are other perk combinations that I don't discuss here, or maybe other perk combinations that are a bit more of a surprise or like, oh, this was actually really good. Um, I would like to make a follow-up video once Into the Light is out and once I've gotten a few weapons in my actual hands. Um, but the reason I do this now is because for PvE, you generally know reload perk, damage perk, you're probably going to be fine. So let's talk about what we got, what we got coming here. So forbearance, um, I'm probably also going to be skipping over these paragraphs, by the way. They just kind of go over like, here's why we picked the weapon. I'll talk about it for like one or two. But for forbearance, it should be pretty obvious. It is the is it's one of the staple special weapons for ad clear and it has been since vow of the disciple uh when it came out a couple of years ago it's one of the best specials in the game only the second the second special ammo weapon to include this strong ad clear perk in chain reaction the first one being salvager salvo that is correct in season 13 and salvager salvo also an excellent weapon still to this day still a great weapon um but if you haven't been able to make it into the raid now you got Forbearance coming to uh, an onslaught near you. Now, if you are someone who maybe was looking for, you know, Undercurrent when it came out very recently. I know this is kind of scuffed, by the way. I'm sorry. Um, this could get some, it, it, it could get some stuff, you know, like a stats for all, uh, you know, if you want to do Volt Shot on it, cool. You got one for all, you got Bait and Switch. You got some good stuff on here. I mean, this Forbearance, you can get Ambitious Assassin Chain Reaction. You can get the raid combo on this thing if you want it um keep in mind chain reaction is getting a bit of a nerf in final shape so you'll be able to enjoy it up until final shape and then final shape is getting some kind of a nerf so just like be ready for that but also if you already have a forbearance from the raid and you don't want to go grind out a new one to get ambitious assassin chain reaction again you don't have to like i i know indomitability the new origin trait it's pretty good but so is soul drinker like soul drinker is also pretty strong so like you don't you don't feel too much pressure to go try to get a forbearance if you already have one and that you've like crafted and enhanced oh don't forget that you're going to be able to enhance all of these weapons in the final shape so all of these can come with enhanced perks at some point a couple of months after into the light comes out so like if that's your big concern 
Don't let it be a concern. Um, otherwise, you have El Clasico, Ambitious Assassin, Chain Reaction. Um, we also have... what? So what do we have on this thing? Unrelenting, Stats for All, Demo, Ambitious Assassin, Surplus, Steady Hands. Those are kind of weak. And Disruption Break. Disruption Break might might do a little something something it's been a while since i feel like we've seen disruption break on a on a new gun or maybe i just haven't been paying attention i don't know but I, it just feels like it's been a minute um and then we have wellspring golden tricorn is excellent uh one for all excellent bait and switch i don't know if i'm going bait and switch on forbearance personally i'm kind of using it for ad clear i don't want to have to worry about using my other two weapons in order to proc bait and switch especially when you have one for all like one for all you're gonna hear me talk about one for all a lot in this video. I am a one for all giga stan. I will stand one for all all day. If one for all has one fan, it's me. If it has zero fans, I am dead. One for all is great. You also got chain reaction. You have rampage and desperate measures, which is the new perk, uh, which was called last stand in the dev re reveal stream. They changed the name. Um, this is the perk that uh, if you get a kill with a weapon, it gives you a damage buff for like seven seconds. But then if you get a kill with an ability, it gives you a different damage buff that's like stronger and it can stack and it's totally different than Golden Tricorn, trust us. So yeah, that's, that's gonna be, I'm not gonna probably mention it too much during the video, but it, like it is there and it's probably gonna be strong. Um, you got a lot of good, op I mean, Ambitious Assassin Rampage. Anyone got a, uh, a, a Deafening Whisper from season 12? Cause that's, that was uh, the role here, Ambitious Assassin and Rampage. I still use this thing. This thing is, is 11 seasons old. Now I can at least upgrade it to uh, something a little more modern. Although I'm not going to have a void option. This is still going to be arc. Um, but like Ambitious Assassin Rampage. Not a bad idea. Although if you have Ambitious Assassin 1 for all, do you really need Rampage? Stats for all, 1 for all. If you want an arc version of Explosive Personality from Season 16. I mean, you can do that here. But I think... You, you probably want to let's go for something a little more ambitious not to be a huge cheese lord right now but go for something a little more ambitious but stats for all one for all is still excellent one of the best perk combinations in the game especially for a weapon like a waveframe grenade launcher succession kind of the same deal as forbearance you know succession the new version anyway that you can go craft its origin trait which is bray inheritance inheritance uh also a pretty good origin trait as far as things go so if you don't want to grind out a new succession to go get the new origin trait i totally understand because guess what reconstruction recombination probably going to be one of the big go-to's on this weapon as well and if you already have one it's enhanced it's crafted it's level 1700 whatever I, you don't feel too pressured to go get a new one unless you really 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 want like the limited edition variants you really like the paint job whatever um, otherwise moving target, no distractions, lead from gold, reconstruction, firmly planted demo and discord. I don't think discord's really kind of like broken into the meta just yet in terms of usability, especially with something like succession, which is more of a sustained damage weapon. And also like snipers haven't really been the most relevant until recently. Um, so that's why I like, I'm kind of like, eh, like stay away from discord right now until we can prove otherwise. Next column, you have uh, snapshots, uh, snapshot sites, redirection, Recombination, Vorpal, Focus Fury, Firing Line, Box Breathing, and Desperate Measures. Again, I think of this as a sustained weapon, so Recombination is good. Vorpal weapon's only 15%, but at least it's something. Firing Line's 20% if you can stand near two other people while you're doing damage. Focus Fury, kind of along the same lines. You just gotta hit a lot of crits. Kind of has synergy with Reconstruction. You do have a little bit of flexibility, but I still imagine a lot of people are going reconstruction, recombination, not only because it's good for, you know, boss damage to have that big giga shot. You just got to make sure you hit it, but it's also good in other aspects of the game too, right? It's good for like taking out champions. You get a bunch of primary kills, you switch to a recombination sniper, bop, you bop them in the head for a bunch of damage, and then you move on, right? You can't really do that with like a focus fury. It's tougher to do with like a firing line. You know, stick with the stick with the classics. Stick with the classics. In terms of PvP stuff, I mean there's just there's already so many good PvP snipers out there, but moving target snapshot, maybe a no distractions snapshot. Box, I don't know about box breathing. Unless you can like one tap in PvP, which I don't think is possible. I could be wrong though. Could totally be wrong on that. Um, yeah, I'm still, I'm still using this more as a PVP or a PVE, uh, sniper. Falling guillotine. Same kind of a deal. 
If you have a Relentless Strikes Whirlwind Blade Fallen Guillotine from forever ago, and you don't really care about grinding out a new one, keep it. It's going to be fine. But this can get some really good stuff. Like, almost everything here is great. First column, Vorpal, Relentless, Repulsor Brace, Frenzy, Attrition Orbs, Chain Reaction, Duelist Trance. Next column, Surrounded, Whirlwind Blade, Destabilizing, Eager Edge, Bait and Switch, Sword Logic, and Desperate Measures. So, like, Vorpal Surrounded. I know I kind of snooze on Vorpal Weapon in general. I am a Vorpal Weapon hater. But, like, Vorpal Surrounded, it's just, like, it's another 10% on top. You know, and, but here's the thing about Surrounded is that like, if, you know, maybe you don't have a bequest or something like that, the crafted sword from Deepstone Crypt. Um, Surrounded is, it's only good in really specific scenarios, especially in raid content, right? You got to have a really specific scenario where you can get Surrounded to proc, because if you can't get Surrounded to proc, it's literally worthless. So you need the right encounters. And in the raiding world, swords not getting the most amount of use right now. Maybe something happens in Final Shape. Maybe we get a sword-friendly raid in the Final Shape, and all of a sudden, Falling Guillotine's insane. Okay. Um, but they're more... They're, like, I don't I don't want to say niche, because I feel like that's the wrong word, but they're not, like... They're not super, super important right now for the raiding world. I still think it's important to have a good sword in case that happens, um, but at this particular moment with like rockets and linears still kind of doing their thing swords kind of on the back burner. They're, they're waiting for their moment. They're waiting for their time right now. It's like, we don't really know. Um, otherwise, I mean, there's just so many good things. You got repulsor destabilizing. If you want to do something like that, I'm looking at you, Jer Falcon hunters, um, as a void Titan, I haven't really been that excited to use any sort of repulsor brace destabilizing setup. Uh, cause void Titan, in my opinion, in PvE right now, it's kind of like, eh, uh, not the most excited about it. Chain reaction destabilizing. That feels like it can be kind of like a more fun thing that someone's absolutely going to make a build with that. Cause I'm, I'm pretty sure chain reaction destabilizing appears on another weapon. Although it could be another power weapon. Could be, uh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. So you have some options here, but if you want to just go the, the classic combo, uh, relentless strikes, whirlwind blade, I think it's a very safe bet to make right now. And then as swords start to drop and a lot more damage testing starts to happen of like, okay, you pair this with this, it's better than this and this, then we can kind of get into the more nitty gritty of that. Um, but without the ability to test a lot of these things, other than just like mathematically being like, okay, bait and switch is this much percentage and sword logic is this much percentage and whirlwind blade is this. without doing all that, go, go relentless strikes, whirlwind blade, start there. And then you can expand your horizons as time goes on. Oh, also, to mention uh, the Slammer, the Nightfall Sword that everybody just grinded for, including myself. Um, I feel that I've heard, I think Cross did a little bit of testing. I haven't done any testing myself of like comparisons to Fallen Guillotine versus the Slammer and like the Slammer with bait and switch and like which one's better. And I heard that the differences weren't really that substantial. Uh, I, I feel like a lot more testing is gonna happen when this sword comes out in particular. But if you didn't get the Slammer, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it too much. Unless you really wanted a stasis sword. Don't worry about it too much. Recluse. What are we looking at? Master of Arms, it's it's somewhere in the 15 to 20% range. It's not the 50% that it used to be. Still a pretty good option for PvE. Uh, you got Feeding Frenzy, Enlightened Action, Subsistence. Probably looking at Subsistence. Uh, threat Detector, Repulsor Brace, Hip Fire Grip, Dynamic Sway. And then you have Master, Master of Arms, Target Lock, Frenzy, Destabilizing, Surrounded, Tap the Trigger, and Desperate Measures. I'm probably looking at subsistence. I don't I don't want to just recreate Funnel Web. Like, I don't want to just make a subsistence frenzy recluse. I already have that. But if you don't have one, like, it's it's not the worst you, that you could do. I'm probably looking at a subsistence master, master of arms situation. Maybe a desperate measures, depending on the different uh, damage boosts that you get from it. Um, I think that could be potentially pretty interesting. In terms of PvP... Maybe like an Enlightened Action, maybe a Threat Detector, maybe a Dynamic Sway. Target Lock did get nerfed a little bit recently, so it's not as crazy. So I don't know how truly important it is to have Target Lock on an SMG anymore. 
Uh, I'm not the most up to date, especially with Recluse, which I think is a faster firing SMG over like the unending Tempest that I have, which is a slow firing. So like target lock probably works a little bit differently with that. Consult your local PVP expert on that. Yeah, I, I think I'm probably looking at Master of Arms, but like I'm actually not the most excited about Recluse. Like it's it's kind of I don't know. Like I'm not I'm not too jazzed up right now. You, um, Jir Falcon Hunters, Repulsor Brace, Destabilizing. The only other SMG that can get that is the title, which you can no longer get. So if you didn't farm one, you have a second chance here with the Recluse. But I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually the most excited about the Recluse. Maybe I'm just kind of sleeping on it. I don't know. But I've just been using a like... I've been using Iklos. I've been using Subjunctive. I've been using Callus Mini Tool for Volt Shot, for Incandescent. And Destabilizing Rounds, I just don't feel like is on that same level as those other two. So maybe that's why I'm not as excited about it. I don't know. Like, I feel like it's going to perform pretty similarly somewhat to Funnel Web. And I know how Funnel Web works. It's pretty good. We'll see. Mountaintop. I think Mountaintop's absolutely going to crush the PvE world. It's going to crush. I think it's going to crush it. Um, iconic Weapon. We have Ambitious Assassin. We have Impulse Amplifier. Demo. Lead from Gold. Slick Draw. Auto loading holster and overflow. So we have three perks that can get us more than one shot in the mag. Then we have Rampage, Vorpal, Adrenaline Junkie, One for All, Harmony, Recombination, and Frenzy. Gee, I don't think you can I, I don't think you can miss. I think your only miss is Vorpal Weapon on Mountaintop. And that's like still kind of good as a special weapon, 15% damage boost. I mean. Dude, you can do like an auto-loading harmony thing. Like harmony's 20%, so you get some kills. You switch to an auto-loaded GL shot that's 20% more damage just for free. Like that's pretty good. You have Ambitious Assassin. Again, all of these perks that kind of overflow the mag. Impulse Amplifier, I think it was more of a PvP choice. Um, demo also has a bit, little bit of life to it. Same from Lead from Gold, uh, just to keep you stocked on ammo. I don't know if I'm going Rampage on this thing. I don't know. If you are going Rampage, you need, like, you need, like, Overflow. Sorry, Auto-Loading Holster doesn't overflow the magazine. Um, you need Ambitious Assassin or Overflow, I feel like, to really get a good amount of juice out of out of Rampage. One for All is kind of the same deal, but One for All lasts 10 seconds. So, like, if you have to manually reload the weapon, okay. Like, you, you'll be fine. Um, recombination is, is going to be interesting, too, for, like, a... For like a giga shot, let me just uh, elemental kills stack one stack of recombination, giga damage. I mean, pff, recombination could do some nasty stuff with mountaintop. That might go crazy in certain situations. I don't know, but you you got some you got some good stuff here. What am I looking for? I I'd be willing to try a, a recombination. Absolutely, I'm willing to try auto loading harmony. Willing to try that. I'm willing to try ambitious with maybe one for all. I'm kind of I kind of sleep on rampage. I sleep on vorpal. Adrenaline, I always sleep on like Adrenaline Junkie and Pugilist and stuff like that, but this could absolutely go hard as well if you uh, if you know what you're doing. Um, yeah, a lot of good stuff. Maybe even Overflow, I don't know. I'd be willing to try Overflow at the very least. Hammerhead. One of the best machine guns that we've had. It's obviously completely outclassed right now at this moment in time, uh, but they are trying to make it competitive with Commemoration. Commemoration... If you recall from Deep Stone Crypt, it is craftable and it can get reconstruction. It can get killing tally. That's our base. That is what this has to fight against in order for it to be competitive to some degree. So what can we do with Hammerhead? Feeding Frenzy, Destabilizing, Envious Assassin, Rampage, Fourth Times the Charm, Wee Woo Rounds, and under over okay kind of capping it off a little bit a little bit weak there fourth column second major perk column you have surrounded you have high impact reserves target lock onslaught killing tally desperate measures tap the trigger gonna be very hard to go wrong if you just want to use this as a pure ad slaying weapon sort of like how you would use a commemoration right now or any sort of 450 rpm uh machine gun or maybe like a fixed odds which is a little bit slower you have so many options that I don't even feel comfortable telling you what you should and should not do. Maybe don't use high impact reserves or tap the trigger for PVE. Because, like, you got target lock. You have, well, I mean, I kind of snooze on target lock right now. But you got, like, onslaught. You have killing tally. You have desperate measures. Surrounded more of a specialty thing. You got to find the right situation to be surrounded so you can actually use the thing. But, like, onslaught, killing tally, desperate measures. All great. All very good. I... 
I, I mean, I'm definitely leaning towards killing Tally the most because it's incredibly simple to understand. It's very simple to use and it's very, very strong. Onslaught has some potential, but I've always wanted to be very in control of all of the shots of my machine gun to not waste ammo. But Onslaught is still absolutely a, a good option to pick. Target Lock is more of a single target damage kind of situation. Fourth times Target Lock, or maybe even an Envious Assassin Target Lock. Um, but I just I don't really think of machine guns as a boss damage thing right now yeah i mean okay so like going back to surrounded you know you can enhance surrounded if you find the right situation for it it's, it's, it's a pretty meaty damage buff but again you got to find the right situation for it now some of you are probably like bro you didn't even mention rampage killing tally I, but i think it, it it just might be overkill which is is crazy to say like when we have stuff like gms but like in, okay, like in a GM world, in a master world where stuff's really high above your level, I can see something like Rampage Killing Tally being kind of nice because you're you're doubling up on these damage buffs. Um, but for most other parts of the game, I just don't think you even need that much. I don't think you need Rampage and Killing Tally. Like I think I'd still rather go Envious Assassin. I'm still going to try it. I'm still going to try Rampage Killing Tally. Um, but right now... If, if I if I could only pick one, I'm probably going Envious Killing Tally. Maybe I'm going Wee Woo Killing Tally, something like that. But I will absolutely try Rampage Killing Tally to see how good it is. Um, but my feeling is that it might just be overkill. Like, you might just not even need that much. Blast Furnace. Here's what I'm going to say about Blast Furnace and Elsie's Rifle by extension is that I'm... Like, I think a lot of people think of Blast Furnace as they did as pulses were back in the Forsaken era, which they were very good. One of my top kill, like, weapons of all time is Go Figure, which is a four-burst pulse rifle. And back then, they were very good. They were workhorse weapons, and they were very, very strong. Nowadays, sure, in, like, a general, like, who cares, you're running the coil content, whatever... They're fine. They're fine. But when I think about higher end stuff, I am not big into pulse rifles personally. I think they are not as strong as I maybe want them to be. That's because you're trading that safety. There's still a lot of pulse rifle enjoyers out there. This, still, this thing is still probably going to be some sort of PVP uh, menace to deal with. Although it's tough to really get excited about PVP pulse rifles when it feels like every season I'm seeing videos from creators that's like new god roll pulse rifle and it's like how many how many god roll pulse rifles can we get every it's like one or two every season I can't get excited we have 14 god roll pulses available to us like so I, I'm just like that's part of why I'm not that excited but also I didn't use blast furnace I used go figure so that's why the nostalgia isn't hitting as hard for me but I know for a lot of other people it's hitting hard for you so what can we get? Sorry, my nose is like really itchy. Zen moment, snapshot, shoot to loot, keep away, perpet motion, kinetic tremors, and head seeker. Then we can get kill clip, firefly, one for all, frenzy, rampage, rapid hit, and desperate measures. So yeah, for, for PVE, like keep it simple. If you want to do a reload perk and a damage perk, that's going to be fine. Kinetic tremors, I know a lot of people are going to be looking at in combination with firefly, like, oh my God, crazy damage. Uh, well, sorry. These are these are perks that do damage. They are not damage perks. Does that make sense? So, Firefly Connect Tremors. I am willing to try it out. I'm willing to to see how it is. Uh, you got one for all on here. If you want to keep it a little more simple, keep it a little more classic. I don't know if I'm going Rampage when we have one for all. I think one for all kind of outclasses Rampage. Headseeker, more of a PvP choice. Uh, otherwise. I, I, I'm just not, I'm not the craziest. Shoot to loot's more for like the super end game players. I, I don't really recommend shoot to loot to your just, to your average player because you got to know how to use it really well. Yeah, otherwise I just, I'm like, okay, it's got some good stuff on it. Don't get me wrong. I just, I am just not a big pulse rifle enjoyer at the moment. But if I got to pick something, I will try Kinetic Tremors Firefly, even though I've been kind of sleeping on Kinetic Tremors. Personally, I'm just not, uh, it, it wasn't, what I wanted it to be in terms of its performance. Um, but I'll certainly give it a try. If you want to keep it classic, you know, keep away one for all. But I imagine a lot of people are going to go kinetic tremors for, for PBE. Edge Transit. Uh, so this was a meme way back in Forsaken. It was like dropping all the time. In case you're wondering, like, why they bring back Edge Transit? It's, it's kind of a meme. 
And we haven't seen it in a very long time. They have not reissued it since Forsaken. Uh, so I'm like, okay. Here's the thing about Edge Transit is that if you were worried about having to farm a Cataphract in Trials, um, I don't think you need to worry about that nearly as much anymore because the role on that was Envious Bait and Switch. And would you look at that? It has Envious and Bait and Switch. So pump the brakes on having to farm Trials when Cataphract comes out. Maybe just wait for Edge Transit to come out. Although if Edge Transit comes out much later... Maybe it's something that comes out in May. Let me double check. Never mind. It comes out right away. Shut your mouth. Um, so you you can you can farm this thing right away. You got two months to farm a good edge transit. Otherwise, this thing is is stacked as far as grenade launchers go. Chain reaction, cascade point, impulse amplifier, field prep, ambitious assassin, uh, envious assassin, multiple assassins, and repulsor brace. Then you have frenzy, destabilizing, deconstruction, one for all, bait and switch, full court, and explosive light. Also, don't forget that these weapons can roll with multiple perks. And there's been some discussion of getting Envious and Cascade Point in the same column. Because you can, like, pick, you know, which, which uh, if you get lucky and you get multiple perks. So there's some discussion of stacking your thing with Envious Assassin and then switching to Cascade Point while you have uh, extra shots in the magazine. Now, whether or not that sticks around to be determined. So that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting to see. Um, as for the as for what I'm going for, I'm going for Envious Bait and Switch. I need one of those. I have yet to get a Cataphract. I think that's the one to go get if you want to have a grenade launcher option for boss damage going into the final shape. Grenade launchers are like, they're on the precipice. If not, like, technically better than, like, rockets, but it's just, it's tough to get people to change their ways. Like... You know, we've been doing rockets for however long we've been doing them on every raid boss. Like, nobody's going to switch. But all it's going to take is, like, one or two fights where a grenade launcher is absolutely berserk and everyone's everyone's switching, right? And then that will expand to other parts of the game as well. So, otherwise, what are we looking at? If you want some some more fun stuff, yeah, again, you got, like, Repulsor Brace destabilizing rounds. If you want to keep stacking that. Um, chain reaction destabilizing could, could kind of be fun. I would like to try that out to see how good it actually is. Um, a lot of ad clear options for, for, uh, for this thing. I don't really feel like you can go wrong here. You got one for all uh, chain reaction, uh, even field preps, like, okay. Ambitious assassin, envious assassin, um, full court. I don't know if I'm going full court. I don't think I'm really going frenzy. I feel like that's kind of on the weaker side. Same with deconstruction, but you got, you got some, you got some choices. You absolutely have some choices depending on, uh, how you want to use this thing. Well, if you want to use it as boss damage, you're probably going to envious bait and switch. Luna's how I completely butchered in the most recent video. So I'm not going to talk about Luna's how that much in this one, because I barely used the thing way back when, when it was a 180. And it's getting now changed to a 140. And I've also seen some discussion of like, uh, like it doesn't even roll with Zen moment anymore. Like, uh, I don't even know how good it's going to be because they reworked Magnificent Howl. So it's going to take a lot more work to get those two taps that you used to be able to get. And yeah, so I, I don't feel the most comfortable talking about this thing for PVP purposes. I will get one. I will try it. I will see how it is. Um, but in terms of discussion pre-release... I don't really want to engage too much. I'll talk about some PVE stuff, but even then, like, PVE stuff, it's, this thing's not going too crazy. I'm looking at maybe subsistence incandescent or, maybe like, a heel clip incandescent in case you are a summoner enjoyer, but you wanted it on a hand cannon instead. Desperate Measure is also probably going to be pretty good on this thing, but, uh, I mean, you, you we got some options already for some... Uh, for some solar hand cannons. You have Zally's Bane. You have, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a po a integration which can get uh stats for all incandescent also a very solid option and they just kind of give this one to you i don't even know if i said that right but integration this this hand cannon but i mean this is a you know subsistence incandescent like that's not a bad perk roll heel clip incandescent it's not a bad perk roll for something that like you just need to play onslaught for so um otherwise i'm gonna i'm gonna just we'll move on from that one midnight coup a workhorse from year one. This is kind of the same same deal. It's a workhorse weapon. You're probably looking at something like uh, Firefly. I, I know a lot of people are going to gravitate immediately towards Firefly Kinetic Tremors. Uh, explosive Payload, maybe. Yeah, maybe even Outlaw. Like, Outlaw is still, like, it's still kicking. 
Uh, it's funny that like Outlaw Rampage used to be like the god role of roles, and now you're kind of like, eh, it's like, okay, it's an okay role, I guess. But otherwise, you have Kinetic Tremors, One for All, Zen Moment, which is not a PvE thing, really, uh, and Desperate Measures. You, you got options. Desperate Measures, One for All, Frenzy, Kinetic Tremors. If, even if you wanted to go Rampage, like I would I would not besmirch you for going with Rampage. Uh, Outlaw, Firefly, Shoot to Loot, uh, hold off on that. Explosive Payload, if you want to do maybe like a double stack and damage thing. Moving Target, Attrition Orbs, I'm not really looking at that for PvE too much. Enlightened Action is, uh, is okay. If I'm hunting one down, I do want to see what Firefly Kinetic Tremors can do. I do want to see what Firefly One for All could do. Like, double, I'll double damage on that. I love One for All. Hung Jury, yeah, I know, is one of the most requested weapons to bring forward from the original Destiny. And then you brought it back, like, three times in six seasons, and people are just kind of tired of it. So, I, I, you know, I think I could, we could have gone with Hung, Hung Jury. You would have had to have find, you you would have had to have found something as iconic as Hung Jury, but I think that's a doable. I think that was, that was doable. Um, scouts, kind of same situation as Pulse Rifles. Um, so, I'm going to, I'm going to keep both of these next two kind of brief. Um... I don't use scouts. I don't use pulses in PvE in high-end stuff. I just don't think they're very strong. But for the enjoyers out there, what are you looking at? We have re Rewind, uh, Enlightened Action, Kinetic Tremors, Rapid Hit, Shoot to Loot, No Distractions, Loose Change. Then you have One for All, Cascade, Box Breathing, Firefly, Precision Instrument, Desperate Measures, Explosive Rounds. Um, really tough to go wrong. Could you go Rewind, One for All? Yeah. Could you go Kinetic tremors firefly yeah could you go rabbit hit uh desperate measures yeah uh, scout enjoyers find two damage perks find a reload or a damage perk you're probably going to be fine but i'm also not in the biggest hurry to go farm a hung jury because i just don't think they're very i don't think scouts are very strong but th there's so many options here it's it's so hard to go wrong so so hard to go wrong elsie's rifle same kind of a deal now returns as a void weapon with top tier pve and pvp perks i will be the judge of that feeding frenzy zen moment repulsive brace loose change keep away under over and rewind loose change over under being top tier that's that's a question mark for me then you have adrenaline junkie frenzy destabilizing kill clip desperado desperate measures and head seeker I mean, I don't know. You say top tier PVE. I'm I'm kind of snooze. I kind of snooze on this for for PVE purposes, really. Uh, that's mostly to do with the fact that PVE wise, I'm not really using pulses. You know, again, hunters, repulsor brace, DC, like Jura Falcon hunters are like, oh yeah, baby, it's time. But like everyone else, I'm kind of like, I kind of snooze. Yeah, what, what what would I even want? Maybe like a wee woo wee woo rounds and like a desperate measures. I think that's probably what I'd be going for for just like something that's more of a workhorse weapon, just to kind of get you through the day. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I'm kind of like I'm not that excited. I'm not that excited. But again, a lot of that could have to do with the fact that it's a pulse rifle, and I just I'm not a pulse rifle guy. And that's it. I'm not a pulse rifle guy. I also kind of sleep on Adrenaline Junkie. I sleep on it a lot. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, I've gone way too long on this. Uh, way more discussion than I thought I was going to have. Uh, like I said, I will have a follow-up. Maybe we'll do like a five rolls that I slept on during Into the Light type uh, type video come out if there's other stuff that I'm excited about uh, or other stuff that gains a lot of notoriety. Uh, but otherwise, pre-release, I feel like this is the most amount of discussion that I can possibly have on these weapons. Uh, so I will see you in a couple of weeks for Into the Light to grind that out. I mean, I might have videos in between then, but I'm, I'm out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.